we are going to continue on with working with vehicles. So this time we're gonna take it from flat shapes and into perspective. One thing you'll notice here is that I've got a rough, rough sketch of my um, flat uh, front elevation. Uh, that's good enough to kind of get started and show you some concepts. Um, the other thing to remember too is that this is just a sketch. So you can take it to the level that, that you feel is appropriate for, for what you need to get. So that means you don't need to spend five hours rendering and cleaning this stuff up. If you remember from box drawing, is that there's three ways to present a box. You can present a box with just one side, right? As if you're looking dead on to the box. Okay, you can present a box with two sides. And this is kind of how linear perspective works, right? And you can present a box with three sides. Okay, so you got your one, two sides, and then you add that third. To set up this two-sided box, you wanna be pretty subtle about it. So here, I'm gonna show you a less subtle version. This right here is more building-like, right? You could imagine that this is a horizon line here and that you're just gonna, you know, put the roof on the house at this point, right? It feels like it's taller than you. You're going to do a setup more like this, right? where it's almost a rectangle. And you can play around with your preference for how subtle this is. The other nice thing about using a very subtle rectangle is that it's going to be very close to the two-dimensional shape that you created in the first place. So we're gonna draw a little bit bigger. Be kind of subtle. Remember we have those proportions that we got from the original car. So this is kind of a long and skinny car. Might need to make that slightly wider. There we go. Okay, so I can kind of do some subdivisions. Remember that in my um, basic proportions over here, that roughly the um, engine compartment added, added, ended at the halfway point. So I can make this halfway point with the X method subdivision. And I know that this is where my engine compartment is going to start. Then remember that this top half is about my one-third line, rather, not half, one-third. So I can come down here to a third, right, and I can subdivide that way. So now I know where my engine compartment kind of uh, ends in both directions. Then, probably at the quarter mark or the 20% mark, uh, that's going to be the bottom of the car. So here, the bottom of the car is going to have to go slightly up. And then the bottom of the car is also the center of the wheels. So this also establishes the wheel center. That's like 20% mark. Maybe. Or the quarter. So now I've got my proportions. And I can translate my proportions right along the front too. I'm going to do my X method subdivision on the front too. Just so I have that center established. If I can work up those centers, um, things are going to be a lot easier for me as I, as I go through the development of the vehicle. Then in the back, um, I know that this is, if this is the quarter mark, I'm like almost at the, at the um, one eighth mark for the trunk. So I can estimate kind of where the halfway point would be, where the quarter point would be. So it's going to be somewhere back here that the trunk, hap the trunk happens in this car. When I draw a box, if I draw a funky sided box, like if I draw one where all the angles are curved, 
and I take that box into perspective, right? The outer contour and outer shape of the box is different from the straight line when I put the binding box around it. See, it creates these negative spaces in here. So when I push something back into space, from the outer edge of this box, that changes the outer contour, right? You'll see it more dramatically if I do this as a three point, or a three sided box, rather. So this is very different than if I had a box like this, right? So this outer edge right here is very different than this edge. So, when you come into drawing a car, you have to keep that in mind, that you're going to inset things and the contour is going to change. Okay, so I can then go back to my, keep referring to my layout, and um, my wheel well is going to be at, at about the halfway point, so I can start setting up more proportions. So I know my wheel well is going to go here. And the wheel goes all the way back. Since I'm comfortable with that curve, I can introduce a little bit of the curve if I want. And the nice thing about the wheel well is that it hits the side of that. The um, tire does as well. Circle in perspective and ellipse, remember? So here I've got the back wheel well, where that guy sticks out and flares out. I've got the tire. Um, then I've got the trunk back here, right? Remember, this is going to ch start changing the contour. Then this is inset from here, right? As if I'm going this way. So my profile is going to be slightly different. come out a little bit more forward of where it would be originally. Then, remember here on the front, this wheel well has now got some depth to it. There's another wheel well over here. There's going to be a bumper that sticks out right along here and overlaps this wheel. wheel is going to be over here. This is important too. This back wheel, everybody skips this back wheel. Be sure on both sides that you put in the back wheel. And then here, remember, you're going to go at a subtle angle and this angle is going to go into the front. Over here on the front, you're going to have car, then we can get in the hood. Boom. Super cool, super elegant hood. Then we have this. Okay, now we have our basic translation of the proportions of the car over, but it doesn't have that much depth. So now what we have to do is we have to kind of give everything the second side. At this stage, I want to kind of go in um, and start to think about the, the style and like the look that I want this thing to have. So I'm, you know, here I'm going to focus in on like, well, you know, I want this this wheel well to look cool, right? So I have to give it this front side and I have to give it that front edge. So this side's going to run up and over. And then it's going to have a slight arc, go down, all the way down, and back. So this edge is going to come down. Parallel that, be really elegant. The longer these lines can be, the better. 
Again, you can always clean these up. It's always good to do some warm up exercises as well. Remember this has, this wheel well is going to have a couple of sides to it. So this is gonna flare. And give it a side. Now, we can go in with our tire, right? It's just a vertical ellipse. We can throw in our back tire need to have the bottom of the frame then we can go in with our front tire the front tire needs a second side right so we give the front tire a second side then we can draw over that with the bumper it's a really cool really skinny chrome bumper down very very low get into whatever is on this uh, grill here and anytime we can do things like this where what we've done here is we have overlapped the bumper over the wheel and over the tire right so that little overlap buys us a little depth then the wheel well is slightly overlapping the grill right this uh, detail on the grill is slightly overlapped um, by the bumper as well. The bumper overlaps this tire and then the outer contour gets broken up by this bumper. So we run across, we're gonna draw our wheel well back here, right? And we just gotta have a side and go back and then we got our tire here. Our ellipse, so on. And we wanna erase our tire in through there, right? So now we've created a lot of depth um, just through a series of overlaps right here. Then we can come up to our hood. Remember, our hood's got a side to it that runs like all the way back here. The, this is the coolest thing about these Art Deco era cars is that their lines run the length of the vehicles and that makes them really distinctive and really elegant and it's just not something modern cars do. Part of that is the functionality because they don't have things like crumple points and so on. And you can start, you know, in with, you know, throwing in where, where some small details are going to be. Get the top of the hood, right? Um, then from this side, you're going to have the cab emerging. So you got this nice, elegant arc coming down. Arc to arc to arc. Then you've got the top. It's going to join in with that arc and go down. So remember this is a box that we're doing. I think it's very worthwhile to practice these sorts of boxes over here where you just create these arcs. Um, so next we get into some of our medium size details. Remember this window um, runs very straight, has little teeny curves here and here. goes back. It splits right here and into the door back here. Remember we have our paint job that comes around, arcs here, comes right by the wheel well, arcs down, and goes back through here. This segment is segmented at that corner with some chrome here. Now we have our window. I don't really know what the front window is supposed to look like. I don't think I had a, a reference picture of the front window. So the front window is gonna have to go right over to the edge, real close to the edge over here, right? And then there's some windshield wipers. I don't think this was a split window. That's okay. So anyway, now I've got my window. Now I can give this the face of the car a little bit more detail. I can give it a front side. Maybe I can throw in a little bit of division there and throw in the grill or an indication of where the grill would be, right? I remember there being um, a door that comes out about you know, 
about here-ish. You have your door panel that goes there. It goes all the way up. And it was a suicide door, so there's a door handle right there. Door handle goes out and over and back. Then there were some uh, there was some venting over here. And since this is slightly curved, I'm going to just indicate that those vents are slightly curved. Then we can go in and we can add some details into the wheels. We can give this back wheel a size. Also. So we can go in, do several levels of detail. Remember there being some details like that around, around the wheel itself. And I'm just sketching. Remember, um, there's a difference between like a drawing and a sketch and a sketch drawing and, and like a rendering, right? We're not rendering, we're sketching, right? We're not doing this fully realized like drawing, we're just sketching right now. And I think um, thinking of this stuff in terms of like a sketch um, is gonna make things a little psychologically easier. Um, if you think of this as like a rendering or something that needs to be perfect, you might get frustrated and, and that's not that's not what this is supposed to be about. Like this is just supposed to be about studying and learning and you know learning about cars and you know, the interesting thing about drawing um, specific subjects is you wind up learning about that subject um, as well. Like if you draw like landscapes, you're gonna learn a lot about plants and uh, geology and and all that stuff. And if you go out into plain air and do a bunch of plain air paintings, you're gonna be, you're gonna wind up being an environmentalist, I think, because you just want pretty places to paint, right? Um, that's that's the interest. And if you do like, you know, political art, you're gonna you're gonna learn a lot about um, history and politics and um, and so on. And I think that's a, a cool. Um, part of being an artist you know, people assume that maybe people assume that that artists don't know a lot about uh, other stuff but art but I think you wind up learning a lot through that uh, through the process of being an artist and designer anyway so we forgot uh, a couple of details we, we need our uh, we need our uh, headlights right and they go right here and I'm gonna make sure that this headlight overlaps a lot of stuff right here and this headlight over here is gonna overlap. I kind of just sit behind. I've created a tangent and I don't want a tangent. So what I want to do is preserve that and make sure that the headlight gets overlapped in the other direction. Now remember these are basically the arced triangle things. And then there was another similar guy over here, right? Held up by a little post. Here I've got a basically complete three-dimensional translation, right? Um, from here, I need to add the little details to the back. Like, we need to get that, that spare tire on the back, right? And then we need to get the bumper on the back. Remember, the bumper is actually at the back center. And then the bumper had some details like that goes across. Make sure we give this uh, arc of the back wheel well. Uh, so there we go. I mean, from here, like I can take this sketch and I can get into value if I want, but I also don't necessarily absolutely have to. Uh, 